So there was a question on the equivalence of the H1 and energy norms, uh, essentially asking whether one can always uh, establish this equivalence. The short answer is yes. And the more detailed answer is that yes, one can. And the reason one can do this is um, draws from, 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 from two facts, OK? Uh, let me go over those facts right now. So um, does the equivalence of the energy norm, sorry, the H1 norm, and the energy norm, and now let me use our new notation for the energy norm, right? And let me use this, right? Does this equivalence um, always hold? Okay, and the short answer is yes. Now, to understand why, I'm not going to give you the entire proof, but uh, the, the, here is the basis of the proof, or, or the basis for why this works. First of all, observe that in order to speak of either of these norms, they have to exist. Okay, right? Um, note that uh, there exists, that's the symbol for there exists, right? There exists the H1 norm of V and uh, the energy norm, right? Both of these exist. Uh, if and only if. IFF is for if and only if, which means it's a necessary and sufficient condition, okay? So if and only if, uh, this norm, the, the H1 norm is less than infinity, and so is the energy norm, okay? To even speak of them, for these norms to be worked with, they have to exist, and what the, oh, sorry, less than infinity. What this means is that, and, and the reason we can say this is that um, infinity is not a real number, right? The norms both have to be real numbers for us to work with them, which means they have to be finite numbers, okay? Those are, the, the, the real numbers only include finite numbers. Okay, um, first of all, so, so this works. And then what, what we can also use is the fact that omega, okay, the measure of omega uh, is also um, less than infinity. What this means is that our domain omega is finite, okay? What this means is that omega is finite, okay? Then, it's a little technical, but then one can actually use the fact that since omega is finite, uh, one can always represent the effect of the function itself over the domain, right? The function squared and integrated over the domain, right? One can always represent the effect of, of uh, fr from that contribution uh, by just scaling the energy norm with, uh, by, by a constant. Okay, so what this means is that if you now look at the H1 norm, right, and I'll write it just in this form. So if you look at it as V square plus uh, measure of omega to the power 2 over NSB, uh, V comma X, the whole square DX, right? And yes, of course, there is also the 1 over measure of omega, 1 over NSD here, and this whole thing raised to the half power, right? This is the H1 norm, right? Now, if you are comparing this on the side with the energy norm, which is, um, which is of this form, right? Um, the energy norm is integral over omega, V comma X, V V comma x dx uh, to the half power, right? You're comparing these two. What is missing on the right-hand side is this term, right? Using the fact that both the norms uh, have to be bounded for them to be defined and the fact that the domain omega is finite, right? One can essentially demonstrate that the difference between these two norms brought about from the fact that 
the H1 norm does have the effect of V square while the energy norm does not have it, that difference can essentially be compensated for through constants, right, through finite constants. So this is why when we multiply this by C1, we can indeed show that it's lesser than or equal to the energy norm. And with just using a different constant, one can demonstrate that the energy norm itself is lesser than or equal to some other constant multiplying the, uh, the H1 norm. Okay, so this equivalence holds in general. It, it's based upon, uh, upon this fact and uh, that one. Okay.